I love my computer, yes. I did, actually, I did have a mohawk for a little while, but it was very streamlined, really, really thin. I put. When you're ready, you son of a. So we're here at Club 181 today, isn't that right, Dean and Mike? Famous. What are you guys doing down here today? Coincidence, I ran into you. What's going on? Uh, little video. Of all the videos that you've shot, what do you think? Like, which one did you have the most fun making? Uh, God, what do you think, Dean? Well, it was my second one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so far, one. so good. Yeah. You're having a good time. Mm. This one definitely was you better look than good, the other one. Both of you. And can this we get one a shot of these than sandals? The other one. I love the sandals. Thank you. Tell, Tell you. me a little bit about the story of the video. Um, well, yesterday we shot a whole day of us playing, like in this kind of nightclub type of David Lynch type of weird nightclub thing. And then today we're doing this <clears throat> lineup where we're standing like in a mock police lineup with people that look like us. And how they're going to tie together, yeah, well, we don't, don't know yet. Dean's <laughs> acting like he knows why we're doing this. We don't kinda... know why we're doing this. <laughs> Video, how much of the you know conceptual stuff and the creative input comes from the band? Uh, this time, absolutely none. <laughs> and it's probably them. why we're having a good time. <laughs> you don't have as much on the line. Uh, yeah. Before in the past, I think we've all torn our hair out about which idea gets put where, right. who looks like what, when. Never was happy with the results. Absolutely. I mean, usually we do take part, take like a major uh, role in like what's being done on film, but this one, I think. Probably due to a lot of like time constraints, we right. kind of just let people take control of the video. And so far, how, do you, how are you feeling? So about far, that? it's great. You're like, yeah. it's the scariest thing because I know this is going to be the one video that's really like that you're really stands psyched on. Stands out, like and we'll say, yeah, that's the one we had nothing to do with. <laughs> Look how good it is. And so far, this has not been um, typically disgusting and uh, right. horrible, un uncomfortable for me, very uncomfortable, and uh, sort of, you know out of your element feeling. Sure. You know, for me, if you ever saw us play or whatever, you know, I'm real comfortable with a lot of water on me and a lot of snot in my face. <laughs> right. and, you know, nobody right. in my face saying do that again. You know, right. so, but this has been okay. This has been okay so far. So, so far, far, so good. So good. Nice. Going for doing some wacky covers. I love yeah. the Midnight Cowboy thing. Anything uh, new in the can that I can look forward to? Oh, we got a little Bee Gees cover. We got a little Al Martino, little Gigi Allen, you know. You know, when you put out a record, there's always like, like there's any record company in England, there's one in Germany, they always want more material for those right. special little versions of whatever. Right. They want more B-sides. Like the nine and, songs on the CD single. Kind yeah, of. and we're just thinking, I mean, it's such a pain to get together and have to like record these songs, make these B-sides after we just like sweated through this record and finally <laughs> made it enough, through. Enough. Yeah, so I just had this little studio in my basement and I was gone actually, and Dean started getting it, got everybody together and they started recording uh, these B-sides. So it was cool because we did them completely ourselves with no producer or anything, and it sounds really cool to me. I mean, it's a little bit amateurish, but it was that's fun. That's all right. So, yeah, exactly. You're playing the song. What's going on? <laughs> what the band? Is big wide, ben, showing you, you performing and the whole club. So you just do exactly what you want to do as you did yesterday. So it's all the same stuff that you did yesterday. Just play. What was the first concert you ever went to, Roddy? Uh, I think the first thing I saw was uh, I went to Don Krishner's rock concert and saw Devo. That was so cool. Yeah, it was Not really cool. Not a lot cool. of people can say that. No, I waited in line for an awful long time. I think my first concert was like a day on the green. Yeah, day on the green. See, I would have killed. What was been your first able concert? to go to those. I think it was Night Ranger. That's not so bad. David Bowie. Really? What yeah. tour? Um, right when Space Oddity came out. Wow. I guess I was God. I was eight years old. My dad was a David Bowie fan, so. That was a cool first concert. It was good, actually. It was a good, uh, my first impressions of rock music was that, and I think that was good. Yeah. A lot of androgynous people smoking pot. I think right. it was good for an eight-year-old. Yeah. Next, some Danzig, Chili Peppers, and details on how you can enter Super Rock's warm-up the zombie contest. <laughs> they had to deal with each other. It was a little bit like the real world. That's the way I saw it. Every time we've recorded, it's always been around here. So, I mean, there's always just crap to do when you live at home. You know, there's letters to mail, bills to pay, crap like that. You right. know. This, really, there was nothing to do except listen to crickets at <laughs> night. Well, we saw God. We had a really bad uh, 
car accident. I heard about the car there. accident. Yeah. I heard you had a couple of car so accidents. There were, yeah. We had to look a lot of things in the face. It was nice. And you pleased with the outcome? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't drive anymore. <laughs> so you looking forward to this tour? Or yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've been touring already now for two months. You and now Europe? comes America. We did Europe and we just did a little spell in Australia really quick. Didn't you guys play with Nine Inch Nails down we there? We played with Nan. Did you Three enjoy Nan? Nan? I loved Nan. I thought Nan was Trent, he's got quite a rock show, eh? Yeah, he's right? Like, little goth boy. I know. He out tantrums uh, Courtney by a long shot, I wow. think. Was she ever in your band? Did she like play with you once? Oh, no. She was in our band for a while, like months. She months. was a key player. Yeah, she was very key. Oh, good. She was cool back then. Yeah, it opened up doors for us. Do you yearn at all to be like the front man and like do? S I totally thought you said do you yearn. Oh, do you yearn? No, do do you? I do, do often. Do you yearn to step from behind the drums? Not when I'm only spitting though. No, I absolutely do not. <laughs> absolutely. Totally into being no a drummer. No way. I don't want to stand at the front. I sit at the back. You do your thing. There's snot and there's sweat and spit and. So you're not like offended by drummer jokes or anything. What do you do when a drummer comes to your door? I don't know. Paying for the pizza he's delivering. <laughs> <laughs> Roll playback. Stick around for some sick of it all, Offspring, Run DMC, and all kinds of faith no more after these messages. Who else will be on the show? Will this show just be faith no just more? Just FNM. How do we rank? So what do you think has kept Faith No More together all this time? Uh, geez, I don't know. We've had a lot of rotating sort of musical chairs, so to speak. The new blood is always really exciting. Like right now, having Dean is really exciting. Do you want to clear up for me the, like, kind of, give me the lowdown of what happened with Jim Martin? Because I hear a lot the of rumors. The lowdown. The skinny? Um, God, I feel like I've said the same thing so many times, I don't, I don't know another way to say it. I mean, we just basically, well, musically, we were always kind of different, but, yeah. uh, you got to a point, I think, when the chemistry can just even just wear itself out into nothingness, you know? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, we just, everybody tried to make things work, and it just became so stressful that, uh, you know, it became just kind of obvious, you know? Dean, how's the promotion going from being in the crew to the band? How's that? It's going fine. Yeah? Yeah. I'm liking it. Any good stories? Like, Makes maybe... Makes less money. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's true. Wait, so you were Roddy's tech? Yeah. What do you think's made you guys stay together so long <laughs> if you supposedly don't like each other? We like each other. Oh, so that's just been We've always lies. wanted to like media? each other. We just never had the courage to like each You're other. Just currently falling in love? Yeah. That's beautiful. It's kind of like uh, when you live with a roommate for <clears throat> six or seven years, but you're also sleeping together, and you call them a roommate, but really, what are they? They're your lover. Your undercover lover. That's right. <laughs> Any favorite shows. old TV shows? Eight is Enough. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Mash. Mash? <laughs> Mash, yeah. <laughs> I hate to say it, you know, but no, Brady no. Bunch and Partridge Family, sure. That's sure. kind of was, you know, it. I have two favorite movies of all time. Probably one is Phantom of the Paradise, and there was this old one with Paul Williams as the devil. So that at a very young, impressionable age. I've probably seen Scarface more than any other movie right. because I saw Scarface in an impressionable state, and it made quite an impression <laughs> on me. What movies do you know all the words to? Uh, I don't know, Blade Runner, because I was working in a movie theater for a long time and always hear it inside. I played it for like months. Really? Where'd you work in a movie theater? San Francisco, right here. Worked in many, You're many, You're in the, in the Tenderloin many. District? Actually, really close to the Tenderloin District. It was very seedy, very seedy theater. How'd you get the nickname Puffy? Well... All these uncomfortable questions. Oh, is that, is, I didn't know if that was like something you hated. Some nicknames people like. I don't really particularly care for it, honestly. Well, I'm not um, calling you. I'm calling you Mike. So. Yeah, but I appreciate the respect okay. that you've given me to do that. <laughs> Believe me. Um, it came from when I was uh, about 15, and our old guitar player Jim Martin. Yes. Who was uh, I used to play in a band with him, and uh, a dear friend of ours called Cliff Burton who's now, you know, long dead, still dead, right. still as, dead. Of this, as of this taping, still dead. And um, we were stoner kids, oh. and we had a really terrible band. <laughs> what you were know? you called? The band was called EZ, E, you know, Z, right. Street. <laughs> Anyways, I had a pretty large afro <laughs> at the time. I mean, it was large. It was large. <laughs> I would say 
a large afro. It was large. I mean, it was a real large. It was. You were run, you were taking control of the street. It was basically. a spectacularly large afro, and they're still trying to this day to get me to regrow it. But, yeah. No luck. Um, and that's where the nickname came from. It was Puff Head. It oh, used to Puff be. Oh, Puff Head. So okay. you know, nobody knows it, but now you have the truth. It's exclusive. <laughs> Up next, one from DJ Hurricane and an epic video from Faith No More, only on Super Rock. Tell me about the big World Wide Web for Faith No More. That's, that's well, it's a again. website. Website. Um. And, and that's a spot where you can, actually, you can do a thing if you have Mosaic or, or this thing called Netscape. You can do a search and you write Faith No More and they'll take you to the spot. Uh, and it shows all of our tour dates and you can download like screen savers and stuff. And I think Warner Brothers is cooking up one for us now, but this one's unofficial. It's by uh, just a, a fan of ours who did it. It's totally cool. It's really good looking. And there's a list, a thing called a mailing list where if you have email, you can write to these people. And I don't know it like off the top of my head, but basically if you subscribe to their list, it's uh, everybody, it's like a fan club of Faith No More, and we're on it too, so we, people start spreading disinformation, we know, and, uh, or we spread some of our own, and uh, it's cool. Mike! Wow. It's pretty Mike, good. Mike, you take his jacket off. Uh, Stay tuned for Smashing Pumpkins, Rob Halford and the boys from Fight, and information on Super Rock's warm-up the zombie contest. So don't move. I'd love to talk to you a little bit about your band, your other band outside of Faith No More. Yeah, let me it used to be called Star 69, then there was some mix up with right. that. Right, there was another band in New York called Star 69 and they threatened to sue, so we had to change it. Now it's called Imperial Teen. You finished an album. Finished the record. Is that coming, that's coming out on the same label as Faith No More, is that correct? Yeah, on Slash, Slash Records. And I believe you worked with uh, Steve McDonald as Steve a producer. Steve McDonald was, uh, yeah, first time Steve producer. Steve McDonald of Red Imperial. Cross. What's going on with your side project, Mr. Bongo? My side project, uh, oh, we just recorded side. another record. You did? Yep. When's that coming out? Uh, don't really know. We're getting artwork together. Yeah. Hopefully soon. I really like the look from the uh, From Out of Nowhere video, the sort of the bicycle shorts tank top. Are you going to bring that back? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, you, you know, I think it's coming back. Never seen that before. Nobody's seen this for a hundred years.